had a good week. Last week we saw about how Israel um, had gotten to the promised land, just outside of the promised land, and God told Moses to send some spies to check out the land, one from each tribe. And so Moses picked 12 men, and they went and spied out the land for 40 days, and they brought back huge fruit from the land and some sad stories. They said, yes, it's an amazing land. Yes, it's huge. Yes, there's all kinds of things that God promised were going to be there, but there are also very large cities with giants in the land, and we can't conquer them. They're too strong for us. And even though Caleb and Joshua said, no, it's okay. God will be with us. Let's go. They tried to kill them and said, no, we're not going to go die there. We didn't, we didn't leave Egypt to go die somewhere else. And they almost went back to Egypt, and God decided to punish them and said, look, I have done all of these things for you, and you haven't learned to listen to me. So you're going to be living in the desert for 40 years. And so sure enough, that is what happened. They were living in the desert, out in tents, for 40 years. Um, and during that time, lots of things happened. People started to get old, and people started to die. One of those people who died was Moses' sister, Miriam. Remember, she was there before Moses was born. She was the one who hid his basket in the river so that he wouldn't die. But she got old and she died in the desert and they were very sad and they, they had a, a funeral for her because they were very sad. But um, this time had been going on and they had been moving around in the desert and they came to this place where there wasn't any water. And they were sad about Miriam and they were just frustrated and they were being Israel. <laughs> and so instead of going to Moses and saying, Moses, you know, where, where is God going to give us water from? Like, what are we going to do? We don't have water and we're thirsty. What do you think they did? They went and said the exact same thing. They said every time they were in a bad mood. Why did you bring us to the desert? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Why didn't you just let us die? This time they added one. They said, why didn't God just kill us with all of the other so the, the spies? Why didn't he just kill us with them? Why is he going to let us die of thirst in the desert? So God heard what they were saying. And he said, okay, Moses, here's what I want you to do. They were at this place called Meribah. And he said, I want you to go up to that rock. And I want you to, in the eyes of everybody, where everybody can see you, I want you to speak to the rock. I want you to say, put, bring forth water. And so he went up. He's getting really angry. He's getting really tired of the same story every time. So he and Aaron got everybody together. They went up to this rock. And Moses got there and he said, listen now, you rebels. I shall bring, or we shall bring forth water from you out of this rock. That's what we're going to do. And then he took the staff, the staff that he had used in Egypt many times. He took it and he hit the rock two times because he was so frustrated and so angry. And water started gushing out of this rock and everybody got water to drink. But God was sad and upset with Moses because he said, Moses, I just told you to speak to that rock. And I wanted them to see you just speak to that rock and for water to come out. But you didn't trust me. You didn't trust just the words that I said to say. And you struck that rock. Because you didn't trust me completely. You're not going to go into the promised land either. You're still going to be the leader of these people until the, that day that they go into the promised land. But you are not going to go into that promised land. You're going to die in the desert too. So Moses was very sad. But he understood that he had disobeyed. Well, then his brother Aaron got old because he was also older than Moses. And he died in the desert. And many other of the men and women who were older started to die those years in the desert. For 40 years, there was a lot of people dying, which is really, really sad. But if they had just obeyed beforehand, that wouldn't have happened. But that is what happened. So they're sad. They're frustrated. They're mad. They wish they hadn't sinned back in the day, but they did. And they're having to live with this 40 years of punishment. It's like being grounded for 40 years, except you have to live in the desert. Okay. And they're out there. And again, 
It's hard to find food. All they have is manna. They get tired of it. They want more stuff. They want different variety. And they just get mad. They get mad at God instead of repenting from the way they behave towards God. And so they started to complain. And God this time decided he was going to punish it. When they said, why can't we just stay in Egypt? Why do we have to come out of Egypt? God said, you know, I've, I've heard enough of this. And so he sent a poisonous snake. Lots of them, but it was the same kind of snake. And a poisonous snake or serpent that would come into the camp and bite people, and they would start to die. And, and he was this, these snakes were biting all of these people, and they were dying. And so God told Moses, he said, okay. Because the, the people came to Moses, and they said, oh, my goodness, this is because of what we've been saying. This is, this is God's punishment. We have sinned, and God's punishing us. So what do we do, Moses? Finally, they understood. And so Moses prayed, and, and God said to him, okay, here's what we're going to do. Because the serpent's there, and the serpent's biting people, and the people are dying. But I need them to prove to me. I need them to show me obedience. I need them to choose to obey. So here's what I want you to do, Moses. I want you to build this statue of sorts. Okay? And so it was going to be a golden snake that was going to be wrapped around a pole, you know, like a T, and this snake was going to be wrapped around it. And so it said when somebody, he said, when somebody gets bit by this snake, if they realize they've been bit by the snake and they look at the golden serpent and believe that I will heal them, they will be healed. But they have to believe it and then look at this serpent and then I will heal them. And that's who got, who got spared from these serpent bites were the people who believed what God was saying. We need to understand that God has given us his Bible. He's given us his word. He tells us what he wants. Sometimes our actions and the, the scary times we're in are because we have sinned and we have to deal with the consequences, okay? We should still look in the Bible to figure out how to go through those consequences. We also need to look to Jesus and believe that he has done the sacrifice that we need for us to be forgiven okay he's a very big God he's a very big God and he knows what's going on in our lives he wants to help us he wants to be there with us and I wish Israel had learned this a lot sooner but we get to learn from their story don't we and the amazing things that happened to them and the crazy, crazy thing they said over and over and over again. God, why didn't you just let us die in Egypt? Because God had a promised land. God was a promise keeper. And God was going to take them to a better place if they would just trust him. We need to trust God. We need to believe that he is who he says he is and he's going to do what he says he's going to do. Next week, we're going to talk about some more of what happened to Israel and how God continued to take care of them even though he was punishing them for 40 years in the desert. He was still providing food, still providing water, still providing protection. And we're going to continue to see how God is a promise keeper even when people are.